Hey everyone, no, don't worry, this will not be a gaming video, but since it is Easter and uh, I bought The Ascent on a sale, uh, I think a couple of days ago on Steam, I was playing it for the past couple of days. Hence, don't expect too much from this video, but the main point is that I fell in love with the prop design in this game. I'm not a character designer, so I'm always paying more attention to the vehicles and buildings and the world design, and that really works for me here. I wanted to just try and sketch one of the very cool vehicles in the game that you will never use since the game is a twin stick shooter RPG sort of thing where you walk around and shoot people, you never really control vehicles. But honestly, I could have chosen any other prop as well, not just necessarily a vehicle. They are all amazing. Uh, and I do want to credit the team for doing such an amazing job uh, and especially the art department, but their website doesn't say much about the team and it is Easter weekend when I'm making this video. So I'm going to be honest with you, I'm a bit lazy to do proper research. I know for sure uh, from Space Goose on Instagram that the art director is Tor Frick. And if you like what you see in this in these game snippets, check out his art station on YouTube for more of his amazing designs. So uh, let me show you some clips of the vehicle that I decided to draw. I do love the mix of exposed engine parts mixed together with the bodywork. It really reminds me of like a, like a motorcycle where you see the bodywork but also the engine. Another favorite element of mine is the non-symmetrical way that the door is opening or cabin hatch or whatever you want to call it. I love it when designers bring asymmetry into their designs. So after taking some clips and a bunch of screenshots of the vehicle, because again, I didn't find any concept art or prop design stuff on the internet, I went about sketching several angles of the vehicle to familiarize myself more with uh, its design and the different elements. And it is important to mention that while I have screenshots, I don't just copy them. I am trying to draw my sketches in different angles from those in the screenshot. This drawing exercise is not me copying the vehicle, it is me trying to understand the design so I can reproduce it from any angle without reference if necessary. And that you do best with repetition, just like in our old school days when we had to learn a poem by heart or a historical event for our history test uh, by reading it over and over again and repeating it to ourselves, more and more information is stored in our little brains. That is why I try to rotate the vehicle, not just draw it from one angle, I'm trying to remember the details on all sides. I also got stuck at uh, one point because I have this tendency of immediately starting in a three-quarter view, which is good because it is faster, but it is much harder than starting with a simple orthogonal view. So I started up the good old mirror tool and I tried to create a top view of the vehicle for my uh, from my screenshots. This helps quite a bit with placing all the details like pipes and rails and seeing what goes where. And now a quick word from our sponsor, pickle juice. Ah, because if you want to get better at drawing, you better start drinking pickle juice. Disclaimer, this statement is just for the purposes of comedy. Pickle juice will not help you in getting better at drawing. Well, at this point, I want to talk a bit about precision because I also mentioned that I want to memorize the design so I can recreate it without the use of reference. I do not want to be able to create every single detail. I want the look and feel of the vehicle. I want that if someone looks at it, they can go, oh, wait, that looks very much like that car from that IP. Obviously, you can spend days and weeks and totally memorize the design. But for one, I didn't have the time. I spent around an afternoon on this. But also, what benefit is that going to bring with it? Unless you are the designer and you need to reuse or iterate the design for a next game, you don't need to know everything about the vehicle. As long as you can convince others that yes, this is that vehicle, or at least one based on that one. So yeah, while the orthogonal top view helped me place many of the details, parts of the proportions are still wrong. I adjusted many pipes and left a lot of greebles off. After I felt I had sufficient, and by that I mean minimal, knowledge of the vehicle, I wanted to draw a nice showcase page with a couple of different views and add an extra layer of detail just to make it slight, slightly nicer to look at and maybe a bit more presentable. I am not trying to make a beautiful fan art, a beautiful illustration here. The main goal is to familiarize myself with the vehicle and 
steal some knowledge and style and I will return to this point in a minute. But it is still nice to be able to showcase your sketch so I like thinking about a nice layout for maybe an Instagram post. And that comes with cleaning the lines up a bit and arranging the elements in a pleasing manner. But let me get back to that whole stealing knowledge and style point I made. Because that is why I wanted to familiarize myself with the vehicle in the first place. Thor uses many elements that you can recognize throughout his work. I was going through his art station and was looking at his work from Outer Worlds, Fallout 4 and Wolfenstein and I was like, oh yeah, of course, now I can see it. The design sensibilities are something you could call maybe slightly diesel punkish, slightly retro futuristic. Things feel heavy and robust. It reminds me a bit of former Soviet designs where they might not have the latest know-how, but they had an abundance of raw materials, so they made sure that whatever they built was heavy and durable. Also, there is a sort of rounded edge to all of his designs and I love all these elements. And of course, I wanted to steal it, but I don't just want to steal one of his designs. I want to steal it the way he thinks, the way he puts things together, how he uses pipes, how he welds the plates together. Artists often get asked how they develop their specific style. And the answer is this, this is how, by stealing, and obviously I use stealing to be a bit outrageous here, but I mean by learning from others, because I am so influenced by him right now, I might put some of his design elements into a couple of my future creations. At the same time, he's not the only person that I try to copy. I like people like Viktor Antonov, if you don't know him, think of Half-Life and all the hard surface stuff he designed there, and also a lot of others who have influence on me. My point is that by incorporating bits and pieces of these people's designs into my design sensibilities, I am developing something new and different. So stealing is not quite stealing and new is never quite new. And just to give you an example of what I learned here, it is giving up on symmetry. I love the two pipes running down on the left side of the vehicle. They are not nicely parallel. They are a bit awkward next to each other. And that gives such a character to design. Engineers are all about function. And it can happen that the aesthetic will suffer because pipes need to go there because there's no other space. And this also tells us a little bit about the story. Clearly, you want all your pipes and electronics and parts running under the fuselage of your flying vehicle. So this hover car was upgraded or adjusted after construction. But because we see so many of these vehicles around the, the game world, it could mean that the early model was defective or it is a new upgrade, it is a version 2. But because we are in a cyberpunk world, there was not a lot of time and not enough resources from the company who built these, so they couldn't call the batch of cars back, they just issued these ad hoc upgrades. And this is why I love prop design in this game. These vehicles tell a story, they tell you things about the game world, about the type of society, about the economical situation. This is what I want to learn, this is why I am making this fan art. So I can incorporate these sorts of elements and storytelling beats into my future ideas and designs. And then returning to the Instagram ability of this little drawing, I thought I'll do my favorite thing, be lazy, <laughs> and I let an AI help me out with the rendering of this vehicle. I threw each of the three drawings into Viscom's AI and chose the renders that I liked most, and then just adjusted the values and painted over the parts that needed some extra work. While the AI still doesn't do a perfect render, it is a huge help for me not having to start from a, a blank white page, but already having having some values there that I can work off of. Uh, and there are many happy accidents, as Mr. Bob Ross would uh, call them, that are very cool looking and can give me more ideas in which direction to take the render. Anyways, uh, this was all the stuff I wanted to talk about in this little stealing slash learning from amazing concept artists video. I hope you found it interesting and that you can take something away from this video. And since I really want to make sure that you find people take something away from this video, let us have another short challenge since you really enjoyed the previous one. I want you to take one prop from a video game, movie, cartoon, whatever, and draw several sketches of it from several angles. 
I want you to use angles that you don't have a reference for and I want you to identify at least one element that you think is really cool in that specific prop. And if you have the time, incorporate that element into a concept of your own. We're going to be cheeky and we are going to use the hashtag steal idea challenge on Instagram so I can see what you made. I would love to see your sketches, a screen grab of the prop you chose and of course your own concept if you find the time to do it. Also, when you are posting in the concept challenge channel in our discord, make sure to add your Instagram or our station handle so everyone can find your other work. We are going to look at the results in the live stream on the 28th of April so you have until the 27th of April to submit your sketches and concepts. I hope this seems exciting for everyone. I am really looking forward to seeing what inspires you and what you can come up with. Until then, hit that like button, subscribe if you want to see more content like this, support me via one of the links in the description if you feel like it, but the most important thing is that you folks have a great time and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.